So, the thing about this aircraft is you get a serious case of whiplash when you're looking at this one, then you're looking at this one, then you're looking at this one, and you're looking at this one. Beautiful aircraft. This nose on the cargo version opens up. Um, Lufthansa still loves this aircraft. Still flying it. I think they have the eight. I think they retired all their, their 400s, but I think they might even, uh, they might even bring them out of retirement. They don't, they're not gonna bring the Airbus 380s out of retirement. There's another view of the 777. That one doesn't quite have the range as the others and I think that's why it didn't sell as well it is a very it's a it's like I think it's got over a thousand orders but there's a 200 and 300 and then there's variants within the 200s and 300s mostly talking about range competes against the Airbus uh, long range but I think Project Sun Qantas is gonna go with Airbus on there Project Sunrise so it looks like they fixed the hydraulics on the aircraft because <laughs> this aircraft was leaning to one side or the other. You can see I'm I'm five foot nine. I can pretty much walk underneath this aircraft. Um, does it need to be higher, taller? Maybe. I mean those engines there, you know, they need a lot of clearance to do what they do, especially how they're getting bigger. But and here's potted technology. This technology is really a lot of the innovations in the aerospace industry were made by Boeing. When they made this technology and studied it for their you know 50 years ago. So these fairings, what they do is there's a shock wave that comes across. The wing and what these fairings do is they canalize or channel that shock wave so instead of it rippling across the wing and weakening the wing it takes that that air that would have been wasted or destructive and just pushes it back behind it creating a little bit more thrust okay. uh, it's a uh, I say it's a JTD, a JT9D. I'm not sure. One of the earlier high bypass engines. You can tell uh, early high bypass engines versus more modern bypass engines. There's the empennage or the tail of the aircraft. One of my favorite must see spectacles here in Tucson, Arizona. That's for sure. The GE Jet Propulsion Lab. Now this GE Jet Propulsion Lab has banks and banks and banks of computers inside monitoring it. A uh, GE engineer said I really need a 747 to test these engines. Mostly because you can see or, or you can measure uh, aerodynamic phenomena in the tail because this thing is so long. Other aircraft, that's not exactly possible. Now, the Rolls-Royce engine manufacturer uses a 747-200. GE used a 747-100, now it's using a 400, I think. Pratt & Whitney's got a 747. But its engines are not mounted on the wings. There's wing that's on the side, so you got like a five engine aircraft, but their engines are pretty small. So, that's my beautiful baby, it's my favorite aircraft. Can't believe these are <laughs> the wings, the wings have fuel in them. The wings have fuel in them, incredible, but that's that's a fact. So much engineering and expertise that's involved in this aircraft. This aircraft represents thousands and thousands of human hours of mental and physical activity to create this beautiful 
spectacle, practical aircraft. American engineering here. Can we do it again? <laughs>